Hey, what's up everybody? Too Tall Toby here, and in today's SolidWorks Live Solve, we're gonna take a look at a sheet metal challenge. I love sheet metal. I know a lot of you out there love sheet metal. And I've just recently completed writing a brand new sheet metal training class. So if you've ever been interested in getting some sheet metal training, this is the class for you. We're gonna be teaching it live in just a few weeks, and I've got all the information down below in the description if you're interested in getting some live training with Too Tall Toby. It's, uh, it's live, but it's really a web meeting, so it's available for anybody all throughout the world. Information down in the description. And with that, let's get into today's SolidWorks Sheet Metal Live Solve. All right, guys. Well, I hope that was enough time for you to do your screen capture because we are going to move on now. What a beautiful Monday, huh? What a great, great weekend. Got to do lots of stuff this weekend. And... Uh, Kept busy for sure, but a good weekend, a good Monday, good day to be here with all of you. This song just makes me feel very thankful to be here with all of you. Hopefully you guys can hear the song. It's probably at the perfect volume, so I'm going to leave it alone. All right, guys, let's get into this live solve using SolidWorks, and this is going to be a sheet metal challenge. And so let's, uh, let's take a look at this thing. We got the sheet metal challenge up here. We're going to try to run through this relatively quickly, but we're going to still take our time and kind of follow our best practices when it comes to sheet metal. And so the first thing we do is we just kind of like get our bearings. Like what is this model made of? What material is it using? What density is it using? And the reason that's important is because if we have templates set up, then we can just select one of those templates. So we're going to be working in millimeters, plain carbon steel, 7,800 kilograms per cubic meter. Excellent. Now, the next thing we do is we kind of get our bearings about any of the notes that are on the sheet metal drawing. A lot of times when you have a, an actual drawing, you'll have a thing that says general notes or it'll just say notes. It won't be this beautiful magenta note, Toby note here, but you will often see notes on the drawing that'll help you understand how to create the 3D model or how to manufacture the part. So the sheet metal has a wall thickness of five millimeters and the inside bend radius or the sheet metal bend radius is a radius of eight. And then this note here says this can be created with sheet metal features or you could model it within features if you want. And so we're going to model this using sheet metal features. And so we're going to take a screen capture of this drawing. Take a screen capture of this drawing here. And then we're just going to move that over onto the second screen so that we can uh, continue to create this model. But now let's talk about the next part of the game plan, which is kind of figuring out what my very first sketch is going to be and where my origin and my starting plane are going to be. And when it comes to sheet metal, I think the most intuitive way to use sheet metal in SolidWorks and in Onshape is to create the first sketch as a thin feature and then to extrude that sketch along the length of the model. So I think that for this sketch here, I'm going to create this first sketch here. And in SolidWorks, we call this a base flange. I'm going to create this sketch here and then I'm going to extrude it out to this distance, which is a distance of 180. So I'm going to uh, uh, create this sketch. Actually, I apologize. It's going to be 180 minus... 180 minus 5 for the wall thickness, minus 8 for the um, uh, bend radius. So I'm going to take 180 and then I'm going to subtract this region here. And that way I'll have just this kind of like this section right here of the sheet metal. Now, how do I know to do that? I mean, honestly, a, a big part of it is it's just experience. But what I'm doing in my brain is I'm trying to think about how the whole model is going to be built. I'm kind of thinking through what all the features in the model are going to be. And then I'm using that to determine what my starting profile needs to be for this sheet metal design. And so one of the things that I'm looking for is what I mentioned before. Is there anywhere on the model where there's two or more lines that I can sketch and then I can extrude and that'll give me kind of a good foundation for the model. And so you have to get clever about how you're looking at the sheet metal design. You know, if this was a solid model, then I would be tempted to say that this is gonna be my first profile. I'll sketch this thing from the side, extrude it, and then start cutting away. That's a very common workflow you would do if this was a solid. You would kind of like look at the overall perimeter and then model that. But sheet metal works a little differently. And so with sheet metal, what you're really trying to do is recognize where there could be a thin feature that you could extrude and then either add to or remove from. So if this is my first feature here, if this is my first sketch, and let's say we're going to create that sketch on the, I don't know, on the right plane. So we'll say that's going to be our starting sketch plane is going to be the right plane. Our starting profile is going to be this shape. So starting plane, starting profile. Our origin will probably be located down here, just right in the middle. Because there's, although there's not really a line of symmetry, there is kind of a clear 
central area of the model central area running up through there so that's probably where i would put the the origin right at the middle there and then the next feature that i'm going to create is going to be a feature that's going to let me kind of cut away some of this material so it might be a, a cut extrude that comes over to here and just cuts away this material in this direction and then the next feature that i'm going to create is going to be a, a addition of material so i'll create this little area that's sticking out here on the nose, sketch this little area sticking out here on the nose, and then I'm going to add that material to the nose, and I'm going to then have to add that material over here to this side of the nose. And so once I'm done with that, I've created basically everything on, on this half of the model over here, and now I'm going to have to go through and add these flanges that are sticking out the back. So create an edge flange here, and then add some material. We use what's called base flange tab. Create an edge flange over here. This one should just be pretty clean. This edge flange over here should probably come out pretty clean. And then the final features that I need to add are just the cut extrude. So a cut extrude over here on this side, and then this cut extrude over here on this side. So that's what we call coming up with a game plan. You first think about what is gonna be the main sheet metal feature, the base flange tab, and then you start thinking about what the additional features are gonna to need to be to, to ultimately end up with this shape. And you know, just like anything, the more experience you have, the more tools you're gonna to know how they use and how they react and what works and what doesn't. And so your game plans are gonna be more successful, but it's okay, as long as you have a basic game plan, even if it goes sideways, you could always just kinda of, you know go back and pivot a little bit. So let me flip over to SolidWorks here. Let me flip over to a uh, keyboard cam here. And we did spend a lot of time coming up with that game plan. So now we're going to execute. And I, I think for the execution, I'm going to go just a, a bit faster than I normally go. So I'm going to choose new here. I'm going to choose to create a new part using plain carbon steel and MMGS. And we already know our starting plane and our starting profile. So now I'm going to choose the right plane, begin a sketch, orient my view. I'm going to press the S key and create a rectangle. And this rectangle is going to have a dimension of 80 for the height, 80 for the height, and 55 for the width. And then I'm going to hit escape. I'm going to take this line of the rectangle, hold control, this point, let go of control, midpoint, take this upper line here and say for construction. And that's it. That's my first sketch. So, you know, I said in the game plan that my first sketch was going to be a line, a line, a line. I just decided to do it with a rectangle to kind of streamline the process. So now that I've got that geometry in place, sheet metal, base flange tab, sheet metal, base flange tab, and once I do sheet metal base flange tab, this is going to come out to a depth, certain depth. Well, what's that depth going to be? Well, we talked about that during the game plan also. That depth is going to be 180 minus 5 minus 8. And then I'm going to say enter. And there we go. 167. See, I didn't have to do that math. And then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to say that the sheet metal wall thickness is going to be 5. That the sheet metal inside bend radius is going to be 8. And then the final thing I need to look at is, is it? Is it making that thin feature in the correct direction? So there's a reverse direction button here. We want that to be going to the inside. So this is what your first feature should look like. Um, if you're, you know, if you're following along on this video, maybe you want to pause it and make sure you've got all these parameters set up the same way, and you've got your material going to the inside. And then we can hit the green check mark, and we're ready to move on to the next feature. And like we talked about in the game plan, the next feature is going to be to cut away some of this material up top here. So select a face, begin a sketch orient my view so control and the number eight to orient your view s key and then i'm going to create just kind of like a rough outline of what that profile should look like um, certainly we could use auto dimensions here but sometimes it's better just to make kind of a rough outline and now we can get in there and start adding some dimensions so the dimension for this cut here is going to be a dimension from the bottom of the part this is actually on that upper view that top view so from the bottom of the part here so we'll pick that edge up to here is going to be a distance of 40 the angle here so again from the bottom of the part or here's another pro pro tip if you ever don't have a good edge to pick you can fly out this menu here and then choose a plane so for example for this 40 dimension instead of using that lower edge if i didn't have a good good reference there i could do s key smart dimension i could pick top plane then pick this line Click here, 40, enter. And then for my angle dimension, I could click top plane, click this angled line here, and then I could type in 65. So just a little, little pro move there for you. And then the distance from the end of the model to, uh, to, to this cut here, so from the end of the model to this cut here, is going to be 75 minus 8 minus 5. 
Okay, so again, we are going to be uh, subtracting to account for the wall thickness and for the bend radius. So now we can do S key, extrude, cut, and this is going to be right mouse button through all, right mouse button to finish, and that's what your second feature should look like. So now I'm going to pick this face here. Remember our third feature is we're going to be adding the material here and then adding the material over here as well. So our third feature, pick this face, begin a sketch, orient our view. And then we're going to S key and single click here. Again, I think it's fine to just create a rough outline. You know, if you, if you can recognize anything that can be auto dimensioned on the fly, go for it, do it. I'm all for it. But, um, you know, you don't have to. You could just kind of make a rough outline and then go back through and add some of the required dimensions. So the dimensions here are going to be, this is going to be a gap of 10. This is going to be a distance dimension from the top here down to this. Uh, this it's kind of like relief of 22. This is going to be a width here off of that 10 dimension. This is going to be a width of 50. You can see how things are getting fully defined, fully constrained as we're going through here. We can go from here down to here. That is going to be a distance of 40. And it looks like this chamfer is at 8 millimeters. So from here to here is going to be 8. And it's also at 45. And I think these two lines may have come in as perpendicular. So that kind of saves me a little bit. Now, if that wasn't 45, then I'd have to break that relationship. So delete that relationship and then add another dimension here at 45. And then uh, this is going to be 8 on this side as well. There we go. Nice and fully defined. Maybe I'll just put in the hole as well uh, just to kind of, again, streamline things here. So 20 millimeters. And because of the Ivan exploit, the location doesn't really matter. But I like to create these parts without Ivan exploits uh, because that's the point of practice. Right? You're just trying to practice to get ready for manufacturing. So now in the world of SolidWorks Sheet Metal, all we have to do is click Sheet Metal Base Flange Tab. You just click that button once. SolidWorks automatically adds the same wall thickness, automatically merges it to the existing sheet metal. And there we go. There's our base flange tab. Now it's the same geometry over here on this side. So on this side, I could pick this face, begin a sketch. And then this is something else that a lot of times people forget. You can go into the tree here and click on this sketch. So I click on this sketch seven, the sketch that I just created, and then you can come up here to your sketching tools and you can choose convert entities. So that takes that whole sketch and just converts it across. And then I could go sheet metal, base flange tab, and boom, there we go. So now we're done with basically that whole front half of the part. Everything over here is done. Now all we got to do is add those uh, edge flanges, edge flange. This one has a little bit of extra material on the bottom, a couple of cuts, and we are good to go. We'll send this thing out and get it made. So now we're going to come over here to this edge. I'll do the simpler edge first. So I'll pick this edge here, just right at that location, edge flange, bring that edge flange out. And remember, we've already accounted for that extra five millimeters and eight millimeters here, uh, five millimeter wall thickness and eight millimeter bend. So for our flange position, which is this option down here, flange position, we're going to choose this third option here where the flange immediately starts bending outside of the material. So flange position, bend that to the outside. Boom. That looks good. And uh, then what we could do is we could um, edit our, our sketch here. So edit flange profile could edit the sketch here and so i'll just create a dimension that comes from this edge here the inside over to here and that's going to be at 45 enter and finish so that was from edit flange profile i started creating the flange and then i said edit flange profile and that's how i was able to add that 45 dimension and again just to review we can see the flange here is adding on that eight millimeters plus the five millimeters that we accounted for earlier so that flange should be pretty much done and now we can do the same thing on the other side so this edge here we're going to go edge flange we're going to bring that over we're going to set the flange position to be um, outside so it starts here and then adds in that eight and that five. So flange position outside, edit flange profile, and then we can add a dimension here and we can say we want that dimension to be 60. And there we go, finish. And there's that other flange sticking off that back edge. Now that flange has some additional material. So I'll pick that flange, begin a sketch, orient my view. And once I go to orient that view, I will add that extra geometry, very similar to what we did earlier. So I'll kind of inference the 45. I'll pick up on the relationship of perpendicular and then finish that off there. Um, I could make these two lines equal, which will further streamline the process of making that chamfer. Looks like that chamfer is being called out as 8 by 45 degrees. So we can make that 8 there. And then we can say that we want 
this total distance from here down to here to be 90. And we can say that we want the width of that to be 40. And that should fully define that sketch. Whoops. Need a 45 there. Remember, if your geometry is not fully constrained, just grab a blue point, drag it around, see what's missing. So now that sketch is fully defined. That's everything that we need for that tab. So we're going to go here to sheet metal, base flange tab, hit the green check mark, and oh yeah, that's looking good. Looking good. So now all we need is just those final couple of cuts. So pick this face, begin a sketch, orient my view. For all the on shape guys out there, I keep pressing N to orient my view. Figure that'll make you guys laugh a little bit. So we'll come up and over here with this uh, tombstone shape. So again, just as a review, in case you're a little bit newer to SolidWorks, um, if I click here on this lower edge, begin a line, click here, move away, come back, don't click anything, and then move away again, that's what lets me transfer into that or transition into that arc. So it's a, a real good workflow to learn. So radius of eight here on that arc and distance from the this, this edge to the arc is a distance of 21 and then distance from this back flange to here is a distance of 110 and there we go s key extrude cut and this extrude cut is going to go to a depth of 13 so it's basically just going to run right up to where that uh flange flange begins there can i can see that i've got my tangent edges turned off view display tangent edges as phantom and then you can see it's running right up to that that edge there so now final feature pick this face begin a sketch orient my view s key rectangle and this rectangle is going to have the dimensions of we don't know what the height is so i'll just press tab there and we know the width is 40. enter and then s key smart dimension from this edge to here 25 and then s key dimension or sorry i'm already on smart dimension from this upper edge here down to there at 35 and once again that's going to get extruded to 13 millimeters deep so s key extrude cut 13 enter enter give this thing the final spin give it a look over maybe look at it in the flat see if it looks like what we're seeing on the drawing looks pretty close to me so let's take a look at our sensor here sensor do a control q one three eight zero grams so that's going to be my answer one three eight zero grams and let's go back to our presentation and see if we got it correct guys don't forget if you enjoyed that kind of sheet metal design you want to learn more about sheet metal we do have some training coming up and here we go my answer is one three eight zero grams and that is correct Yes, we got it correct. So I hope that you guys enjoyed that sheet metal tutorial. I know maybe the modeling went a little fast, but the more important thing is the game plan. We took our time to come up with a really good game plan, and then we were able just to fly through the modeling. And that game planning will become faster and faster and faster with practice as well. So if you enjoyed that live solve, be sure to hit the like button. Be sure to leave me a comment down below. And let's get into the model that you guys are all trying to solve live here on Model Monday Live and see how we did. So this model was pretty cool. Don't forget, as we are winding down the hour, be sure to like, be sure to